in Eugene by the banks of the river Willamette, where we live in the 60s and don't give a damn it. John All Tucker lived, proud Christian was he, who owned a large gravel and sand company. Up atop Skinner Butte, where that viewing was good, they used to put up a small cross made of wood. Just a long standing joke overlooking the town. Every spring it went up, every fall it blew down. Now some local frat boys, as an act of goodwill, said, let's build us a cross strong enough to stand still. They commissioned John All Tucker, he they beguiled. When the plan was made public, the locals went wild. They objected and shouted till the frat turned and fled. They dropped the idea and they got drunk instead. John All Tucker frowned and he took it quite hard. He was stuck with a 60 foot cross in his yard. But John was a businessman quite well connected. He told of that cross and its plans to erect it with his rich business friends with their collars of white, exchanging their suits for the garb of the night. Snuck the cross up at midnight on little cat feet, stuck it in 26 tons of concrete. Next day among blackberries, ivy and moss, stood the structure now known as the Skinner Butte Cross. The people looked up in their awe and surprise and could hardly believe their own eyes. Seems you must have a license and a permit to boot to build anywhere except on Skinner Butte. Our own city council, their stance was proactive. They granted the permit, it was made retroactive. Our own city government, seven to one, put the stamp of approval on God and his son. Catherine Loris dissented, her voice, it was snappy. I won't break the law just to make you folks happy. Next day she received some anonymous calls that said, you're a commie, my, my, that took balls. The cross was now sanctioned with full law and order till it got the attention of one Charlie Porter. He says the establishment clause is quite clear. This is public land and you can't have that here. We went to the courts and the site wasn't pretty. Charlie Porter, the people, Bill Wheatley, the city. Judge Fort said the cross had to go, but just then the city appealed and it started again. First the state Supreme Court heard us in 69. They said it could stay, then they changed their own minds. 1970 came and they voted once more to declare it a secular tribute to war. We've won pride, the city, the people have spoken. Charlie Porter said, no, no, the law's still been broken. If it looks and it flies like a duck in the sky, and it quacks like a duck, it's a cross, don't I try. Then it's back into court, and it seems we were cursed. Soon as one court affirmed, the other reversed. Was it cross or memorial? It proved our worst fears. Litigation continued for 26 years. Our own city councilmen cried, God in heaven, we can't pay for this lawsuit since Prop 47. Even though to serve mammon would stick in their craw, they finally gave up and complied with the law. Now the old cross was doomed and it had to come down. It was moved to a church on the outskirts of town. Though you cheer its removal or grieve at its loss, we have came to the end of the Skinner View Cross. To relay, to relay, we will dance in the circle on Lunasa Day.